Hi guys, Jordan from BB Campers. I'm just going to do a quick handover video on this Auto Trail Miami. Um, I believe it's a 720, if I remember rightly. I'll have a look on the other side. Um, start under the bonnet. So it's based on the Renault 2007 2008 plate. Um, brake fluid over here on the left hand side attached to the servo. Power steering fluid in this reservoir here at the front. Washer fluid just here. You can see top right up to the top. After we had our service done on it. Uh, engine oil goes in through this cap just here. And goes back on properly. There you go. Um, engine oil dipstick is this one with the yellow top just down here. Engine coolant. This one up here, and you can see there the max, I don't know if you can see it on the video, uh, minimum maximum line, basically where this uh, joins. So you're just there at the perfect level when the engine's cold. Air filter sits inside this box just up here at the top. Uh, and that's about it for fluids. Uh, you've got the engine battery itself sits under the floor in the cab uh, in these Renaults, and actually the same on a lot of the Fiats as well. Uh, so if, if you want to jump start the vehicle, you can still do it from under the bonnet. Your positive terminal just here um, and then you have to find a negative wherever you can find one um, so this here is a negative point down there or if you can find a better negative somewhere there probably is a low you know a specific place as an as an earth i mean if, if you can reach a cable anything any of these sort of engine mounts here would be fine for an earth um, but you know just find yourself an earth somewhere positive and then an earth and uh, that'll be your jump starting points for the vehicle. On this side here, if I open up the door, the fuel goes on the other side. Um, bonnet release uh, is just this one here. So that's under the um, passenger side dashboard there. And your gas bottle or gas locker release is that one just there. So you basically just pull on that in order to release the locker door. So basically when you pull on it, it pulls this down, pulls these, and then pushes these in so that it releases the door from down there. The gas locker itself, um, you have got space in here for two of the 13 kilo propane bottles, I think. Um, but if I'm honest with you, the six kilo ones like this one here are plenty big enough. Um, they last you a long, long time. I don't think you know this, um, but anti-clockwise round to the left turns the bolt on and clockwise round to the right turns the bottle off. You don't have to worry about any of this stuff up here. This is all just for our testing purposes. So you leave all of that alone um, and just worry about this, the actual bottle top itself. You have got a clip holding the locker up as well as when you've got the locker down, there is one for the door, which clips into here. The D-bar that we had fitted, you pull down on this little lever up here. If I just do it, I've got to use two hands to do it really. So you can pull it across and it will lock into place just there. Um, done a really nice strong job of it. And the uh, fittings, one is inside this cupboard and one is up here. Uh, and so I don't know if you can see, but that is really, really nice and strong. Um, so that's a really nice handle to get in. And you do have to use them separately. So if you want to use the lock, um, let me just show you. So basically, if you want to use this D-bar as a lock, then you can do because that will go across the door and you can lock it but if you just wanted to put this back where it is like that you can then still use this lock here putting that one out so there is a separate key uh, for that so if i use this key here turn that whichever way this will then go out and then you can lock that basically you can take the key out if i could the key out properly. <laughs> there you go so you can lock that in place like that if you want to um, and then but the only trouble is that you can't then use this as well as a lock so it's basically one or the other for a lock or you can leave it like this if you want to obviously not whilst you're driving but uh, you can leave it there if you want to as a step in so if i just put this back fridge fence just here so to take these off you just got these little clips at the bottom um, one at the bottom one at the top 
awning light. Your boiler vent is this one just here. Fresh water inlet point is this one. So key goes in. Turn to the left and pull the key out. You'll then be able to take the, take the thing off quite easily. Same for putting it back on until it stops and then key in, turn and take out. And then that just spins around. External gas point. So if you wanted to use the external gas point for a barbecue or whatever you need it for, that's where you plug that into. And basically as soon as you turn your gas bottle on in the cupboard there, you have gas at this point. Locker at the back here. This is basically a locker underneath the near side bed. So again, I just need two hands quickly just to do that. And so a couple of bits I want to show you in here. Well, one bit mainly really, but uh, you've got just down in here, you've got your little yellow uh, boiler dropout point. Uh, so where it is now facing uh, flat is, is going to hold the water in basically. Uh, but if I lifted that upright, so it's facing upwards, all the water from inside that boiler would drop out onto the floor. So the reason you'd want to do that is if it got so cold and you weren't going to be using the van, if it was just sat outside, you know, freezing temperatures almost, then you need to drop that boiler out of all of its water. Um, if you don't do that, the water inside of it will sort of freeze up and, you know, crack and things like that. So make sure that you drain that out if it's going to get to that point. Um, and also you can just, I just wanted to show you there, um, I've got one side, this side of the bed is propped up and the other side's flat, just so I could show you it all working properly. But you've got your little bits and pieces there so you can lean it upwards um, if you want to sit up a little bit. Um, and so you can make it your own with that really. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to show you that. Bike rack at the back, uh, you can see there, we've done a nice, you know, again, a nice neat job of that. Um, bit of sealant running at top, uh, across the top of the bottom rail there, so that no water's going to get behind there at all. Um, I know you're planning on using it for a box, and so, you know, it's all here if you want to put that on when you're ready. Tow bar's down there as well, so you can put your bar across if you'd like to. Um, but yeah, it's all there, all fitted, nice and strong, and also it's the newer, it's the newest shape. Um, bike rack they make I think so it's a nice and neat one um, yeah so carry on now to the other side so your diesel filling point is over here on this off side and it's basically a case of popping the actual ignition key in turning it and it just pulls out like that back in turn the key pull the key out so nice and easy um i've driven this van um i drove it back from the show uh, where i met you um it drives absolutely lovely i just want to show you a couple of bits and pieces just briefly um just so that you know you've got a six speed manual gearbox um every gear is absolutely smooth and you know it drives completely fine you know sometimes on the uh, much older vans than this you can find it they're a bit notchy and things but not on the Renaults to be honest um, and this one drives absolutely lovely the radio if you wanted to use the radio there's a little switch just here which isolates the radio so you need to turn that on in order to get the radio to come on air conditioning switch is this one just here so you will need to turn that on if you want the aircon to start working um, hazard lights down here your horn is just by literally pressing the end of this stalk just here and your lights as well. Cruise control, you have got a stalk for that just down here. So if you wanted to give that a go and try it, by all means. Um, it, it is actually an aftermarket cruise control that's been fitted at some point. Um, but, you know, so, you know, basically I'm saying that I haven't actually used it myself. Um, but if you want to give it a go, by all means. And you've got electric adjusting mirrors so turning this chooses which mirror you want to move so right hand mirror left hand mirror and then basically you just move this around like a little joystick in order to move the mirror wherever you want it to go you've got your blackout blinds which come across just like that and then they clip back over you've got the same just here same on the other door and you've also got the ones just here in the middle as well which meet up in the middle so they come across 
and then basically when they both touch in the middle they've got a magnet strip going down them and they hold together so that means you haven't got to worry about anyone being able to see through uh, at night you have also got the curtains around there if you did want those but you don't really have to use them because you've got these um, blackout blinds so it's completely up to you reversing camera works really really nicely um, nice sort of neat install going into the back of that box just there um, but yeah so the, the, the cab itself couldn't really be more specced up um, but yeah I just wanted to show you a couple of bits in there so hookup point is this one just here so if you did have access to a hookup cable it's always a good idea to be able to plug one of those in um, if you don't it's really not the end of the world um, but there you go it's there uh, this box is here I think I've just left the key in there this cupboard here I'll just open that make sure there's nothing I need to show you in there okay so um, you have got your air ride suspension bits and pieces in here you have got pressure in those so you shouldn't really have to adjust that to be honest with you but you can do if you like um, it's an air ride system and you've got a little compressor just there if you should need it um, yeah so I think that basically just clips on to that if you want to use it put a bit more pressure in the system um, and a little bit water bits and pieces a couple of sort of connections for your pipes down there the point to go in your external water is this so you quite literally just poke it in and so where it is now is in the off position if i turned it it would come on and then water comes out through there so back off to the off position put it out and that's it I'll just make sure that's empty before I put that back in there. That's how you use the external water. Um, your wastewater drain is this one just here. So you just turn this big dial at the side there to drain out your wastewater. And the fresh water drain off is this one here. Again, just more storage underneath the uh, bed and going into the bathroom as well. So I'll just open that up as well so you can see because that may well be where your toilet set uh, is as well. Right, so, yes. So this, uh, loads and loads of storage in here, goes right the way through there. Um, your water pump is just here. If you should ever need to get to that, it's there. Um, and you've also got a couple of bits and pieces just over here which have been added aftermarket. So um, not really the sort of things that we would go through and check, to be honest with you, but um, it's there if you should need it. Your toilet cassette locker. Um, I know that you know how to use these toilet cassettes, so I won't bore you with uh, how to actually use them because I know you've used them before, uh, but you've got a fresh water flush on here. So you don't need to worry about any separate flush fluid or anything like that. And obviously you just put your blue fluid into there once you have emptied it out. Um, Again, bottom of the bed here, so you can, you've got the same adjustment um, sort of clips just there if you want to use those. Um, but yeah, that's about it really on the outside. So if I just walk around and jump inside, I'll show you a couple of bits in there. Right. So I did notice as well, just so that you know, when you, uh, if you have to step out, when you turn the ignition on or start the engine, the step will go in on itself by itself. So it will do that automatically. Um, the reason I know that's because I started it a minute ago, the step was out and now it's not. So it's, it definitely works. Right, so if I just open this skylight up a little bit, it is red hot in here. Okay, so straight away above the door, um, you've got your control panel. So turning that on, it's just literally that button there at the top left. Straight away, you can go to this top right hand button here, or whichever one, the bottom one. That, so flick through and that'll tell you all of your battery and water levels. So first one, leisure battery voltage, vehicle battery voltage, fresh water level and wastewater level, 
pump select, you want to leave that on internal. And you don't need to worry about any of this. You can go through and set your timers and set, you know, uh, the clock and all that sort of stuff. You can do all of that if you like, um, but we don't touch any of that normally. Um, the next one, water pump switch. So turn that on. And then what will happen is straight away you'll hear the pump purging. So I can hear it's already done it now. It's turned itself off. So it will turn itself on, run for a minute, and then turn itself off. And the reason it will do that is it's getting itself up to pressure, basically. Um, the pump won't turn itself off until it's up to pressure. So I pull the, hot, the cold water through. No air in the system. And then go around to the hot. nowhere in the system so once I've done that that proves that the boiler is full of water um, until your boiler is full of water you shouldn't really turn it on and use it um, purely for the fact that it's possible that you'll be you know heating up nothing if the boiler is empty you shouldn't be using it um, so that's a little tip just make sure that you do that first off um, your aux switch here I would advise you just turn that on because that could kind of uh, power up ignition or you know anything really any anything that's been added extra normally runs from the aux switch so these three really are the ones that you want to have on if you're going to come in and use the van you know like like you would normally this button up here you don't need to worry about at all because all that does is switches between the power so basically if i turn these lights on all the lights over the cab uh, over the, the top of the cabinets turn on um, at the moment, it's all being powered up via the leisure battery, right? But if I press this button here, all the lights are then being powered up by the vehicle battery, um, which for obvious reasons you don't want to do because you know, eventually it will drain it out and you won't be able to start the van up. So you don't want to have that one on really for any reason. Um, so that's that. Those three on and then you can go ahead and start using the van. These two switches just here, like I said, do your lights over the top of the cabinets. Uh, and these two here are for your boiler. So if I quickly run you through how this works, this one on the left-hand side, which says Trumatic C, is telling the boiler what to do. So if I go up one or up two, I've got hot water only at either 40 or 60 degrees. All right, so that's hot water only. If I go back to the middle and go down one, that's heating only. If I go down two, it's heating and hot water at the same time. Back to the middle, turns it off. So that's there. The left hand one is just literally telling the boiler what you want it to do. Hot water, heating or both. All right. This one over here looks very similar, but all it does is tells the boiler what energy to use. So either gas or electric. So whatever you tell it to do over here, this one is the one that decides what energy you want the boiler to use. So where it is now, facing this little gas symbol, is gas only. So if I leave this one here and go up one to 40 degrees of hot water, I'll get 40 degrees hot water via the gas. Or I could go up to on this one, which is electric only, and go back up to 40 degrees of hot water and it'll be doing it via the electric element only. So if you choose electric only, that means that you have to have an electric hookup plugged into the vehicle, okay? So nine times out of 10, you're probably gonna leave the boiler just there because that'll be gas only. And, and you know, most people just tend to use the boilers on gas. Um, but if for whatever reason, you don't have any gas in the system and you only have an electric hookup plugged in, you can go up and that'll give you electric. If you're in a real hurry for whatever you've got going on over here, you can go down to, which will give you gas and electric powering the boiler. But like I said, most people will just leave it there in the middle for gas. Turn this one off and that's your boiler controls. So I hope that made sense. Sometimes they're a little bit awkward to try and sort of like run through because they're you know, they can get, take a little bit of getting used to, but once you've done it a few times, you'll be, you know, an expert. Um, so your table and table leg sit in here, like I know you saw on the show. 
Um, so that's where they are. Uh, right, I will show you as well, just briefly so that you know, the handbrake on these Renaults and some Mercedes as well. So the handbrake is fully on at the moment. It's completely on, we're not moving. All right, but it looks like it's completely off because it's ha the actual handle is all the way down. So the way that you use it, I don't know if you've used them before, but you go up to where it stops. So that's where the handbrake actually is. And then you can release it. Okay, I'm not going to because I don't want to roll backwards, but setting it, set it like normal. But what will happen is when you let go of it, the actual handle will go down. So this whole bit here is doing nothing at all. The reason that you do that is so that you can always spin around the, the driver's seat. Yeah, so I hope that makes sense to you. Up to the top where it stops, and then you can push the button in and release it. But once you've set the handbrake, the lever will just go back down to the floor. Okay? So. Uh, okay. The cooker is nice and simple, but I will run you through it. Um, you've probably got the same one on your van, actually, but I'll just, again, I'll just, I'll just run you through. So if you have an electric hookup plugged into the vehicle, you can use this electric hot plate over at the back if you'd like. Uh, and that's literally just by turning this one here between one and six. The rest of them are all just via this igniter and whichever dial corresponds to each one. The grill, you have to have the door open to use that. Um, and yeah, so that, you know, it's as simple as that really. It's all very, very standard. Um, all of the thermocouples have all been tested as part of the habitation check, so they are all working uh, and in good condition. You've got your blackout blinds and fly screens all the way around the vehicle. And obviously all the windows and scarlets have all been checked as well. Um, okay, so you've also got, at some point in the van's life, you have had a diesel heater fitted. Now, it probably won't work because it's quite hot outside. Um, but where I've just turned it on there, I can hear actually straight away that the fan is on and it is working. Basically with the, with the diesel heaters, it's, it's just quite simple. It's kind of just a case of turning your temperature up like I'm doing now. And I'll turn it right up because it's nice and hot. And then just leaving it alone. <laughs> basically turn it on here set your temperature and leave it alone um, it will essentially start ticking away outside drawing a little bit of diesel from your fuel tank and eventually start heating the van up via the little hole that's down there so i'll turn that off just make sure that's off yep so it's just turning itself off and if you can see that there And that's it. So if I push and hold on this. Uh, I want to make sure that's definitely off. Okay, so it's in its cooling down stage now. So where I've, where I've turned it off a minute ago, it'll carry on, the fan will carry on going for a little bit and then it will switch itself off basically. Um, I'm not sure exactly why um, it's been fitted in the past because the whole boiler, um, you know, heating and hot water system via the gas and electric, the original stuff does work perfectly fine. Uh, but I'm not sure exactly. Again, I don't know why exactly it's been fitted, but it is there. If you want to use it, it's there. Um, right. What else have we got that I want to show you? So in this cupboard up here, all of your electrics are in here. OK, well, pretty much all of them. So this is an EC200. This is a power supply unit, hence PSU. Um, and what it does is it basically allocates the power wherever it needs to be around the entire motorhome. So you've got eight fuses down here, which correspond to each one of these uh, symbols or, t you know, numbers, basically. So if you thought there's a problem with an individual thing, uh, like your ignition stopped working, I'd go there, ignitions, fuse number five have a look at that fuse so it's really really simple to use that if you want to try it out your 240 volt trip switches are in here and 
if you had an electric hookup plugged in, this light up here should be on telling you that your charge is working. All of this stuff here is all to do with your TV system. Um, you've got a little TV aerial booster up here. If you wanted to use that, you can do. It's all just completely down to you how you want to use it. Um, so that's that. All the lights around the vehicle have got their own little switches on them. Um, so you can go around and, you know, make it completely your own. Um, however, you know, whichever lights you want to have on and don't, totally up to you. Okay, the fridge um, is nice and simple. It's an AES fridge, so it's an automatic energy selecting fridge. So let me turn it off a second. I'll just show you it from the start. <clears throat> so this is completely off at the moment. So all I'm going to do is press and hold on this on button here. It's going to automatically select which energy it thinks is correct. And it's chosen gas. So it'll light up. which is the ignition that you can hear at the back there. I have literally only just turned the gas on, so it might take a minute just to get through. But basically, that's how it works. You turn it on at the button there, it'll go through and choose whichever sort of energy it thinks is correct. So if I push and hold on this button here, <coughs> I can then go through and it's chosen electric hookup. I press it again, you go back to auto, so it will choose gas again. So that's just lit up. If I press it again, I can flick through and manually choose 12 volt. So that's when your engine's running, gas or mains. Okay, so if you had a mains cable plugged into the vehicle, I would advise plug it in and use it on this symbol here. If you don't, the gas is obviously the way to go. This one over here on the right hand side is a temperature sensor. And you can just turn it up as and when you need to. And basically that's as far as you need to go with it. <laughs> There's nothing else really to, to know if I'm honest with you. Um, the fridge itself, you've got a freezer box in the back just here. Um, yeah, that's about it, really. You've got an absolute shed load of paperwork for the entire motorhome up here and a, 12, a 240 volt socket over the back. Right, so if I close all this over again, fridge there. Um, okay. Above your head, if you stood in front of the fridge, you've got a skylight, a smaller skylight. You can open that up just by winding this dial and you've got an in and out motor. So you can set your speed and choose in, which is this way, or out, which is that way. So you can use it. The reason they put them here is so that you can be cooking and use it as an extractor, basically. Um, so that's the reason you'd have that. So you close the skylight over. And on a nice hot day, that does draw in quite a lot of nice cool air. In the back here, um, <clears throat> you've got your 12 volt socket is just here. So that, I know that you said you need to, you needed one for that. Um, so you've got a 12 volt socket just there, as well as a mains cable plug in just there as well. Um, you can get to your storage, well, the cup is in the way at the moment, but you can get to the um, storage locker and the boiler just through those cupboards just there. But if you did need to get to that boiler drain, I showed you on the outside, you can reach your hand in there and get to it that way. Um, you can obviously also lift up the bed and get to it all that way if you want to, um, but that's completely up to you. So, um, same on both sides, actually, you can get to the storage on this side as well. Um, but to be honest with you, there's not a huge amount to show you in this in this bedroom part because, um, you know, it's all just kind of storage or the beds, <laughs> basically. So that's that. Um, the bathroom at the back is nice and straightforward. Um, you've got a light back here. And there is also one in the shower room as well. Um, 
your bike rack was a little bit of an awkward thing to fit um, for the fitter. So we have had to go behind the mirror, which I know might look a little bit silly, but it we've sort of like packed it out at the top as well. So it doesn't look wrong, um, but we've had to go here. Other, if we didn't go here, it wouldn't have been square whatsoever and it wouldn't have been right. Um, so <clears throat> I'm trying to put it there. But if you can live with that, then, you know, that'd be fantastic. Um, sink back here is very, very simple. It's just hot and cold, exactly the same as the one in the kitchen. Same as the shower, it's exactly the same tap in there. Um, so if you are gonna use that, the hot and cold water will come through there perfectly. And you've got your light up here. Um, if you want to use this as like a draining bit as well, or for like a shower or whatever, a uh, towel, I meant to say, not a shower, uh, then you can do. And you've also got this little clip back here to hold it all in place if you want that, if you want it to be like that when you're driving. Cupboard back here, absolutely loads of storage. And also you've got a tilt and turn TV area in there if you'd like to use that. And the last thing really is your toilet, which is nice and simple. Uh, again, it's probably the same as in your motorhome, but I will show you. You've got the button just here at the back, which pumps around your flush fluid. You then got your drain at the bottom, open into the cassette and then close. And that is it. I've gone through the van and given it a nice good clean through. Um, so it is nice and tidy now. Um, although to be honest, it wasn't too bad at all. I think it has been looked after really, really well. Um, I am gonna go through and use our sort of, we've got like a spray, which makes it smell nice and stay smelling nice for a long, long time. But other than that, we are completely good to go. Um, and we're looking forward to seeing you soon to collect the van. Thanks very much.